Old Chattahoochee is back to being a bachelor again. And today I kind of want to talk about breakups and how breakups are. I think of them as they're like bad days on the trail. Uh, A mentor in through hiking once told me that there's more good days than there is bad days on the trail. And that you just need to get through some of those bad days and then eventually it will be good again. So currently I would say that I'm in more of one of those bad days on trail in terms of the breakup process. But for the podcast today, what I would like to talk about is kind of some of the things that have worked for me so far in this current breakup as long as well as past things and then what I'm going to be doing in the future. And it's really awesome. Thank you, Nat. Unedited Lens. Thank you, by the way. You're always on my lives. I love I love it. And so I'm basically going to go through a basically a three-step process of kind of how I've found breakups to go. Currently, I'm kind of in between one and two right now. So, you know, still kind of, still kind of sucks, still, still pretty sucky, but for a little context into this breakup without going into too many details, but enough to basically have you understand where I'm coming from, I guess, is that me and my ex were engaged in December on December 24th of 2022. So if you're like, yeah, that was only five months ago, (laughs) you would be correct. So we were engaged then. We ended up, we kind of had towards the end here in April, we had some issues going on that we tried to rekindle. The problem was that we were moving to Laramie, which is where I'm at right now, which you'll notice I'm in a totally different place than where I'm at usually. So we ended up moving there together and eventually just things kind of weren't going to be reconciled that we had talked about, I believe in, in April. So we ended up basically just doing like a amicable breakup. Now, then less, but then the amicable, the amicable breakup was, was okay with me. It sucks. Definitely sucks. But in my head, I knew that I would still be friends with this particular person uh, because I still cared about them, thought she still cared about me. And so I figured we would still be good. However, then less than 24 hours later, I learned more information about things that had been going on for the last week, last few weeks that really drove, we'll just say drove a knife into my guts. (laughs) You know that feeling where you get, it's not like the nervous feeling of going on a roller coaster. It's more of like, I don't know. It's, It's literally like you get punched in the guts, right? Anyway, so more information was found out about what had been going on the last few weeks, which again, has kind of forced me to get into where I'm at right now in the first stage of a breakup, which would be the grieving part. So part one is, is grieving. And in my relationship prior to this one, I, yes, it absolutely is. And unedited lens in the chat just, just brought up a really good point that I'm going to touch on in a second. He said, it's tough to be so close to someone and then become strangers. So in this first stage of grieving, in my relationship before this one, I kind of skipped this stage because I knew I wasn't going to marry that particular person (laughs) because she just wasn't a very nice person. We weren't compatible in that way. And we broke up under different pretenses. Now with this one, this one, I have been in this stage a lot longer and it's been a lot harder for me. And the reason is just because of of what unedited lens in the chat just said, which is it's tough to become so close to someone and then become strangers. So 
because of the things I guess that I had found out the day after like the breakup, the official breakup, pretty much the fact that like now I know, like we'll never talk again. Like we'll never see each other again. We'll never hang out again. We'll never like be friends again. Like they're that's like off the table for me. So like in knowing that that's like, that makes me really sad. Right. So I'm, I'm angry of course, but like, I'm, I'm actually more, actually more so sad and hurt than I am, than I am actually angry. Whereas my last relationship, I was just angry because I was, it was just a really weird way to break. We broke things off. So I was really angry at that one. But this one, just like, again, what was said in the chat, you grow this relationship with someone and you, it's like they're your best friend. And now they're essentially dead. I mean, you go, I mean, we dated for two and a half years. So like we had all these experiences together, lived together, this and that together. And now that it's almost like that period of my life didn't even happen <laughs> because it's, it's like having a best friend that, and then they literally they die, but they're actually still alive. So really, so that's kind of like that first process of grieving. Now, let's see, it's, it's been less than a week for me since this has happened. So what has this grieving stage look like? <laughs> so yeah, I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. I, I really don't have a problem being transparent with this stuff because I think it's relatable. Everybody goes through this stuff. Like everybody, everybody gets heartbroken. And if you're going to say that you're not, you're lying. So unless you're my parents who literally have been dating and married since high school, like <laughs> whatever. But what this has looked like for me is literally I have not, I have not cried so much over a relationship than I have for this one. And again, it's more of like, I'm, I'm more sad. I'm more hurt. I'm, I'm like betrayed than angry. And so, yeah, I'm just sad. I just, I'm just sad that, yeah, anyway, knives in the gut. So the hours after this whole thing like occurred, like I found all this other stuff hours after I actually was driving, found myself driving to Cameron pass in Colorado to go on a split board adventure with a couple of buddies that I knew from Colorado. And so I'm literally like driving and like, you know, I'm calling my, like talking to my parents and stuff and I'm like crying. And like, of course, if you saw my Instagram, I have a video on there. I was in a really weird headspace. Like I've never, I've never been in, I usually pride myself on really being in control of like my emotions and things. And at that point it was just like, everything was, I was gone. I was just like totally gone. Like my, my, my mind was just gone. And so like, you know, you're just like screaming in the car by yourself. Cause nobody can hear you. It's just like a straight road. You're just like pissed. And so I get to where we're going to be meet, meeting up at this trailhead. And it's an hour before my buddies are going to get there. So it's just me at this like trailhead in literally the middle of nowhere. I don't have any service. It's just me. It's just me and my thoughts, <laughs> me and my thoughts, which is not a good combination to have hours after this happened, but I did bring my journal. So I journal and I journal like the most I've ever actually journaled. And, and in it, I, I basically say like a hundred times, like the word betrayal. I, I say the word, like my head, I don't know where my head's at right now. Basically didn't, I didn't want to be like there at that, at that moment, like be at Cameron pass. And so like, I literally was thinking like, I'm just going to like drive home. Mind you, it took me like two hours to get there. I was just like literally going to drive home to, to where I was living with my ex, but I was like, well, she's there. So that's going to suck. So I'm not going to do that. But like, it was so uncomfortable. I didn't, like I said, I didn't have any service. There was no friends around. It was really bad. It was like, I was really bad. So finally, like my buddies roll up, but like it was got towards dark. So we kind of all went to bed. Now I knew I wasn't going to sleep and I didn't sleep. I slept probably 30 minutes. And, and the reason is because obviously nights are the worst because you are alone with your thoughts. And when you're alone with your thoughts, your thoughts go to all these different places. And my thoughts were going to all of these things that I never noticed in the weeks prior to this breakup that now were making like sense to me. And my mind was just going off in every direction. It was just, it's pure hell. It sucks. It sucks. 
So I got zero sleep. We got up. We did a, a awesome objective split boarding up at Cameron Pass at Cameron Pass at Mount Maller or something. Really gnarly coolar that we we snowboarded down, and it was awesome. So I'm glad I went. Now the ne- now throughout this whole again, we're still in st- stage one, which is like the grief. You're getting hit with the like the only thing that really takes your mind off of it is you have to do something that takes your mind off of it. So. Like when I was trying to sleep, I was trying to listen to an audiobook. I never listened to audiobooks at night. Never. But that was the only thing that was like trying to, that was getting my mind off of it. Now, when I was splitboarding, like I would kind of come back to it and stuff like that. And it would when I was hiking and I would be with my buddies, like it would be, it would be all right. But then when I would get in front of them or they'd get in front of me and I'd be by myself, it was like it was absolutely like terrible. I would always I'd keep finding myself back into that, into that headspace. Now the next day I went with a buddy and we went climbing and like all morning it was good. And then we got into that afternoon and I started, we started climbing some stuff. And then finally, like on my like fourth climb of the day or something, I knew I probably shouldn't have done the climb. Cause I was like, again, I was getting that, I was getting hit with that wave again. So it was coming in and I, I told him, I was just like, dude, I like, I'm not like in the correct headspace to do this right now. I went up and I did it anyway. We actually like kind of cheated on the move to get me to the top. And then I was just like, screw it. I'm going to do a rappel down. And like, dude, and then the whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, dude, I'm not in a good headspace to do this. And, you know, rappelling's the most dangerous thing that you could do climbing, but I wanted to do it because you have in phase two, what I'll talk about, you have this energy. That's just like, like F you, right. This F you energy. So I get up and I, I get up to the rappel rings and I'm doing my stuff, doing my stuff. I throw like a side of the rope down and I literally realized that my rope isn't between the two rings. <laughs> like it's not on anything. I'm like, whoa, like this is scary. My head is again, not in the right place. Finally, I, I do it, do it up, do it. And I, I get down and, and it was fine. So, so yeah, so that's kind of like the grieving part. I've lost like 10 pounds <laughs> actually. Cause I just haven't really been eating. You don't really have an appetite. Nothing sounds good. So Yeah. Also, what was with this, which is weird, which I've never experienced with a breakup, was I felt demotivated. Well, first of all, I've never been a creator during a breakup, so I was not motivated to do any of this, like none. I mean, I tried to sit down to edit a video, and I was just like, I couldn't even, I couldn't even get, I couldn't even like cut down the video to like, you know, get rid of like the space. I couldn't even do that. Like, I couldn't focus at all. There was no focus. So now couple takeaways from this or a couple keys for me for this. Now, the first thing, the first key for me is that I cannot use drugs or alcohol. And why is that? Well, this because I believe that I need to like fully feel what it is that's going on and make sure that it keeps me from going back to something like that again. So in other words, I don't want to mask what I'm feeling because I know that I need those feelings to move forward and to like have the energy for fate, what I talk about in phase two. And I know that if I just numb that with drugs and alcohol, that I am going to be not in a good place. I mean, you're going to feel good short term, but a long, long term, you're not. And if you know me, I'm all about like long term results. So I know that's not going to be in the cards. My last breakup, we had, I remember talking to my brother and I said, yeah, I'm just going to have like a couple beers tonight or whatever. And, but that's going to be it. But then after I got off the phone with him, I thought, I don't, I don't need to do that. Like I I will be totally fine. I just need to go work out or whatever. So the key is don't use drugs and alcohol. (laughs) The key is you have to go do it somewhere else. Do it in a healthy manner, cope in a healthy way, which we'll talk about a little bit in number two. And the third or the second thing with this would be to, or the second and third thing would be to find something that you immerse in fully. So what does that mean? So that means snowboarding. That means like jujitsu, excuse me. I'm just talking about like things that I do, things that you can focus on in the moment that you can't think about. You can't afford to think about anything else, climbing, anything like that. I found that to help me at least in this, in this first part. And then the third thing would be definitely talking to as many people as you possibly can. I mean, I've been on the phone more and texting more in the last 
couple of days. By the way, I dropped this when I was climbing. It literally came out of my pocket and you can see it chipped. I don't know how, I mean, I had to be 40 feet up and this thing hit a rock and it's still good. This case is awesome. It just broke this little part here. Anyway, talk to as many people as you possibly can. That has always made me feel better. In fact, one of my buddies said, you know, this is just another chapter in your life that's closing. And once she leaves, like, it's just going to be a closed chapter and then the new one starts. And that really helped my perspective a little bit too. So what is the second stage? So the second stage is what I like to refer to as pissed off energy. Now, what I think happens to a lot of people in breakups and has for me, actually not really, it hasn't really ever been this way for me. I always usually move into the second phase fast. But I think a lot of people get stuck in the first one because they get so, because of the things that I talked about, you can't do, which is like DNA, drugs and alcohol, right? You just can't do that stuff because it's going to set you back. The further you, the faster you can get into phase two, pissed off energy, you are going to be a lot better off. I promise you. Now, this is where I'm about right now. I'm, I'm kind of in like the mix of one and two, I would say. And the, what I think kind of differentiates this is that the grief kind of comes in waves, right? So you're not as like in the first phase, like I was like a few days ago, like I was definitely like depressed. Like I was not in a good place. Now that is kind of coming in waves and like randomly it'll, it'll, I'll find it. It'll come to me, but it's not as frequent. It's not like, it's not like my total mood, right? It's just, it just comes in waves. Instead, really what happens is that I found for myself is that I've had just, I have mounds of energy. So I've been sleep like I'm always sleeping like eight and a half hours a night. Usually when I was in a relationship, now I'm sleeping five hours, six hours a night. I, I don't feel the need to, I don't feel the need to sleep. I have this like untapped energy and it's because it's because energy can't be destroyed. It can only be reused or repurposed into something else. And so I have this just, again, PO energy that I'm talking about. And instead of using it in a negative way, I'm thinking that, okay, I have to make this as beneficial to me as possible. So that's what I've been doing. I, I mean, in all my spare time now, I am doing more on this working. I'm working out physically suffering for me has always been a coping, coping mechanism. So going to the mountains, I've been going back to jujitsu, obviously doing other exercises. That's just huge. And not only is it a great use of your energy, but you're going to look better afterwards. You're going to feel better afterwards. So to me, it's a big win-win. There's really not much more that is a big, bigger win-win. So the, the key here is to make yourself better. Use this energy that you have just bottled up inside of you because you're just so just distraught, right? Use it to make yourself better for the next relationship. Another, another thing with this is that this is big for me. In one of my uh, alert, longer past relationship, and I, I see I had a question from Nat saying, how old am I? I'm 31. So, and I've, in, in my life, I've probably had two, I've had one, two, well, since high school, one, two, three, probably five, five or six, like significant relationships. And I don't even know where I'm going with that, I guess. <laughs> anyway, with a lot of these past relationships, what I would do, because especially because I was in the Midwest, and we are raised on what? We're raised on mid, we're on, we're raised on country music. <laughs> and what does country music talk about? Heartbreak all the time, right? So that's what do you what do you always listen to when you're heartbroken? You listen to country music. And it's sad, man. It's super sad. So one of my last relationships, my second to last one, third to last one, I think, I would just, oh, I just put on this Jason Aldean album and I would just vibe to it, right? And it was just. I, but then I would actually end up missing her more. And then like, I'd find myself texting her and I'm like, oh my God, you can't do that. I'm not going to, you know, so definitely not with this one. So what I would recommend, and probably this not, maybe this isn't a lot of people's style of music, but the kid Leroy 
is amazing to listen to when you're on a breakup. His albums on Spotify, there's unreleased stuff on YouTube. I've just been consuming that and consuming that and consuming that because it really, it really partners well with the PO energy here and will really motivate you further. At least I've found that for myself. Now, the third and final phase with this is in a breakup that I found is finally taking ownership. <laughs> this is super hard when it's new. When this when this wound is fresh and the breakup is fresh, man, is it is it I mean, the last thing you want to do is sit there and be like, well, "What did I do wrong? How did I contribute to this?" But this is like super important because if you don't do this, Obviously, you're going to have the same result every single time you get into a relationship. But you need that time in between to separate yourself from the actual occurrence of the breakup. So I'm not in this phase yet, as you can tell. Like I'm, I'm still not in phase three yet. I will eventually get there because there is many things that I did in the relationship that have compromised things. And just like off the top of my head, it's like, I work all the time, every day at the expense of other people that I care about. And that's compromised many things. I do physical, on top of that, it's physical stuff. So I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of time that I, a lot of quality time that I have to spare. So that's compromised many relationships. Didn't realize we were on different paths until, until too late. Probably should have ended it sooner. There's just many, there's just a lot of things that I could could have done in this current relationship just off the top of my head. Now, what I'm going to do is when I get in this phase is definitely going to journal this. So I brought up journaling earlier and I've been doing this for actually a few weeks now, uh, probably about a month. And actually, if I look back at my old journal entries, I have things in there like saying that, like, I can see it in her eyes. Like we won't last till fall, stuff like that, which is really interesting to think. But anyway, I'll journal Okay, what are the things that I did to this relationship that really screwed it up? Because there, there's a lot. What are things that now I'm looking for going forward? What are things that I don't want? Because you're gonna find you're gonna find a lot of things that you don't want, and then you're gonna find a lot of things that you do want from this relationship. So just always learning. I mean, just a big proponent of that. You have to learn things like that to set you up for success next time. So those are the three phases that I typically will go through, I guess, in a breakup. And I hope some of that helps people as they're going through theirs and just know that it's going to get better. It's, it's hard. It's hard for me right now, honestly, like just, just thinking about it because you find yourself very, you find yourself very lonely. I mean, you, again, not only was this a really good friend of yours, but you shared a ton of stuff. Like you were always talking to them, texting them and now it's gone. So you have this, I always refer to it as you're in a canoe or something, a hole is sprung and you get in the holes filling with water. You got to plug it with something new. So what is it that you're going to plug it with? And I believe that a lot of people will plug that with alcohol, drugs and alcohol, anything like that. They'll plug it in there with that. And then what happens? Their what their life becomes worse. They're not getting better. So what I've always tried to do is is plug it with something better, and to make me make me a better person to attract better people. So that's what I do. That's what I do. I hope that helps people. Let's look at some of the comments here. So yes, yeah, so we went through some of these. T J Kilmer. Yes, I am happy that we didn't get married. And honestly, that's one of the things that kind of spooks me with marriage. If 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 a relationship that was engaged can deteriorate in four to five months, ah, I don't know. It's kind of tough. I mean, what would have happened if we were married? Because that would have been really messy. That's not just a, hey, I'm going to move out type of thing. Yeah. Yep. Got some good, encouraging stuff in here. Encourage everybody to look at the chat. You guys are awesome. Need to find a woman who's independent, who allows you to be independent as well. Sometimes women don't like you having fun or having success without them. You know what's interesting about that, Nat, is that my my last one was actually really good with that. 
super good with that. And that's a big reason why we got along so well. She let me do a lot of that stuff or she was cool with it. And, you know, that's one thing that I want to retain for another relationship, but it is also something that spooks me because it, it was always talked about that love the way you are, love the way we'll always support you, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, towards the end of the relationship that kind of maybe gets a little bit foggy. So <laughs> It's always kind of hard to trust, but yeah, you're right. Yep. New breakups are definitely gut wrenching. So that's how we probably got to <laughs> leave it with this one. So I hope people found some, some good value in this. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Appreciate everybody watching. And if you, if this will help you in your breakup, or if you're going through one yourself, let me know down in the comments, like, and share this video. If you could Spotify, if you're listening five stars, give that five stars and then give a follow. So we'll see you guys for the next stream. I'm going to try to do a lot more. So I have the time, right? <laughs> see you later.